Hi everyone, this is Grandmaster Suat Atalik, uh, and I'm once again with you for the game of today. And uh, it's the last time for this tournament, London Classics. And uh, we got a very interesting last round with only one uh, game won by Nakamura, who took the second place after Kramnik. And uh, Adams continued with his bad form, but actually he played a great game against Nakamura. Now we will check their game. And the opening, uh, maybe it's a surprise for many of you. I mean, many people can say, like, uh, is King's Gambit still an important opening? Yeah, it is. Well, for some time, of course, we had doubts about this opening, but uh, recently... Many people tried to revive it, including uh, British Grandmaster Nigel Short, who also played in this tournament. And let me give a small brief for you. You know, Historically, of course, you may decline the gamut with bishop c5. And after two more obvious moves, in these days, they play more c3 to build up the center, after which bishop b6 is the best move. Then the classical move, uh, knight c3, knight c6. Well, here I believe that this position is uh, very familiar for many of you who studied the games of uh, the 19th century. But these days, people have an affiliation more for bishop b5 than bishop c4. Well, I don't know, still these positions are very, very unclear. Still, uh, many things are not settled there. But uh, it was also possible, of course, to come up with Falk Bear contra Gambit. I believe it was a Danish chess player, also from the same time we mentioned. And his counter Gambit was after he takes d5, e4. Where probably the best for white is to exchange and then play bishop e3. Well, once again, it's another gambit. Not only now it was king's gambit, but also the counter gambit. Well, always we have the tendency in the last years, you know, that any of these gambits uh, may be under suspect. And uh, this position after bishop e3... Well, white has a pawn. It's not clear how black will make the use of uh, his good centralized knight. Uh, and uh, I believe white has some uh, advantage in these lines. Another proof is that Nigel Short has played it. But of course, the most uh, important thing is just uh, to accept the gambit. And then, like in this game, Nakamura played knight f3. He did not go for bishop's gambit, which Fischer was fond of. He played a couple of games like this. Of course, another issue is after bishop c4 to push d5. And then if bishop takes, knight f6. Well, as in this game, more people played knight f3 rather than bishop c4. Where, uh, after this move, I believe that, uh, I mean, the classical line is with g5. One line goes, of course, like this, heavily analyzed. Well, there is some sort of equilibrium there. Some equality is almost found. Another one after g5, bishop c4, where we got the Museo Gambit. I believe uh, Nakamura had the intention to go for it because he already played it. But his opponent, who is a very good uh, theoretician, Ivanchuk, he went for, after bishop c4, a more uh, solid line with bishop g7. Nakamura played uh, in an interesting way, h4, h6, d4, d6, then c3, knight, c6. And in this position, he castled. And white has some compensation. 
accordingly in these positions. Well, it's a very strange position. It's really very, very dynamic. And uh, what uh, Adam said in his mind, possibly, okay, he had a bad tournament. He wanted to play one last good game you know, before uh, the tournament finished. And uh, it's a very experienced uh, first move E5 player against E4. And he always had in his mind uh, some schemes about uh, uh, this opening. So he started with d5, and he played knight f6. Here, of course, bishop b5 uh, is sort of an empty move, because black can easily play c6, and he has very good development, as you can see. But... Uh, Nakamura played the topical move, bishop c4. Adams has taken the pawn. This position sometimes can occur after third move, knight e7, which was called like Steinis defense. And uh, <clears throat> the normal looking move here is obviously, obviously the normal looking move uh, after the game continuation is bishop e7. But recently, Carlsen, he had a game with Wang Yu. Where he played very simple. And he even won the game. He had some nice pressure, nice development. Still, white controls the center all the central squares. Black's pieces are a little bit, as you can see, back. And uh, they didn't cross yet the, even the uh, seventh rank. So it's not surprising that uh, white may have some small edge here. At least we can consider that Nakamura had such lines in his mind. But Adams played a more critical line. Bishop e6. So after bishop b3, he went for c5. Now the first idea which comes to mind after d4, black will exchange and black will pin. So this way, at least black is safe. Another interesting line is that uh, white pushes c4 and then sacks a pawn. And after knight c6, he goes for knight g5. This is uh, more or less a more dynamic line. I have seen today both uh, my colleagues and friends, uh, Yasser Serawan and uh, Larry Christensen, analyzing this. And, uh, okay, I believe I, ha I share the same opinion with them. Black is, uh, a, pawn, black is a pawn up. Uh, white has some compensation. And it's some position uh, you know, which needs more test. And uh, in this game, I don't know, Nakamura went for a risky choice, which has already been played by Brazilian player Fier. King H1. You know, when you play a gambit, sometimes this loss of time like King H1, it can be really crucial. So Adams developed and came good move C4. Here with modern chess, I was expecting more like an exchange sacrifice. After which, obviously, black may be okay, but also white has some compensation. For some reason or another, uh, Nakamura, who is a great uh, positional player, in my opinion, apart from his tactical skills, he can really shuffle the pieces uh, here and there. He sort of uh, didn't appreciate this position and went for more natural line. But look what happens is that after a couple of more moves, well, here it looks like uh, black has the upper hand with uh, two bishops. Although the material is equalized, uh, 
I mean, black looks like having a more aggressive position. Here, one might have expected knight b4 from Adams. And I believe he did not like it due to the fact that in this particular situation, white has a strong move, bishop a3. Having time, some tactics in his mind with knight h4. Because if we take on a1, uh, then the knight will not go out. And after some move like bishop g6, as we can see, white will be very happy about what he, what he has achieved. I believe that uh, Adams's move uh, was more to the point. So in this position, he went for rook e8, and Nakamura exchanged on d5, which also brings in mind that black could have taken c takes d5. If the pawn would have been in uh, b2, maybe it would be a more dangerous uh, approach because of too many, say, like weak pawns. But with the pawn on uh, b3, I think this approach could have also been justified, but uh, uh, Adams wanted to control the game more because, uh, for instance, after such a maneuver, he has to push g5. Does Mickey want to push g5? Well, we will see this later in the game. But here, I prefer black. Adams has taken with uh, bishop d5. They punched a couple of more moves. And a very interesting choice by uh, Hikaru, because many people would have also considered bishop d2, which controls e2 square. And also, it's not clear what the bishop uh, will do on uh, b2. But uh, once again, Hikaru has his own ideas. It really works for him. He's a great positional and tactical player. So he placed his bishop to b2. Adam sees the control of the E line. So White has to do something. Just like his yesterday's game with Nigel, he shuffled his pieces a little bit. And now he is, he is, he is in some precarious situation. But uh, we all know that uh, the B5 sacrifice is about to come, which will make the issue very unclear. So King K8, a uh, couple of things to say about this move. It's a uh, great prof prophylactic move because in case of Queen B8, for instance, as I've already mentioned, the pawns starts being, start being very menacing. So because of that, Adam's prepared, King K8. So now he is ready to play Queen B8. Or, like in this game, rook b7, bishop c3, then queen b8. Okay, so now Nakamura with his back to the wall, he really has to go forward. A great intermezzo. Obviously, the exchanges are pretty bad for white because he wants to rely on his passers. So Hikaru stepped back and came to the E-line. Here is the most critical moment in this game. I really do not like uh, the pawn trust G5. I mean, uh, especially keeping in mind the psychological motives in this game that Adams really did not want to play this kind of game in earlier stages. And... Uh, I believe that the more consistent move after uh, rook d1 was to sacrifice a pawn with uh, queen d8. Because now after bishop f4, queen d7, first of all, we have an equal material over the board. Second, two bishops for black. Pair of bishops may really work here. And now so all of a sudden, with this you know, softened pawns, blocked pawns with c5 and d4, it's it's not a surprise if uh, black turn out to be better. 
What can White do here? Uh, a good move could be Rook E3, which is looking for a Queen sacrifice, which may turn out to be really better for White because now, don't forget that Bishop D6 is about to come as well. There are a lot of tactical motives here, if I am not mistaken. Look, a, a terrible scenario for black. Okay, of course it is not forced. When we go back, so after queen d8, we take and queen d7, rook e3, and here, most likely, we need a luft first. And I believe that after bishop d5, uh, I have uh, I have some doubts that uh, the sacrifice is once again to the point. So, indeed, uh, g5 brought some really strange nature to the position, and I believe that it gives uh, black some headaches as well. So, he could have played queen c4. He is ready to push d5, holding his pawn on c5. They played a couple of logical moves. So, Mickey has broke open the position, and Hikaru pushed his pawn to d5. Now it's uh, really alarming for both sides, because White's king is obviously it's not a happy camper, Bishop e4 is very strong. So, black even anchored his bishop to f3. White had to run out of a dangerous corner. And white played knight f4. I think in this position already, white has some sacrificial ideas. Obviously, Adams didn't like b3 because of the exchange sacrifice, and all of a sudden, as we can see, black skin uh, is really, it's really bec became very vulnerable. So one shouldn't be surprised that this, there is abundance of uh, checkmates in this position. Well, uh, obviously, Mickey didn't want to have such a scenario. He's a great intuitive player. So he came up with bishop c5 check and bishop e3. And here, instead of exchanging and helping uh, uh, black to connect the rooks, uh, I was expecting more queen b6, but I believe that he was annoyed about this uh, exchange sacrifice once again. Because just like in the game, queen c3, very important move, exerting pressure. And now, after all these logical moves, white can hit with knight e6. I believe that the complications uh, are to white's favor. Uh, and uh, Adams, with being low on time, he first exchanged, then pinned, and uh, here, I, I don't know. I mean, he played b3. Uh, it's really a bad move. Uh, I mean, consider the, considering the consequences uh, of it. But, uh, of course, you know, during the game, possibly it was looking like the natural outcome. And uh, rook a5 may turn out to be more tenacious, but uh, after knight's e6, uh, despite of many people's opinion, I believe in White's chances. Here, Black really erred with uh, b3. And after queen c3, well, he's in dire straits. He came with rook f8, and he kind of brought knight e6 in. He played b2, came c7. It's a race, and White is one step ahead. And in this already difficult position, 
uh, Mickey decided to resign. And uh, really, the worst thing for him is that after B2, B1 queen, C8 queen, and then white checkmates. This was a great game, providing Hikaru Nakamura the second place. There is a lot to say about his collaboration with Karikimovic Kasparov. And in this game, he has proven that, uh, opening-wise speaking, uh, well, their work uh, was not very fruitful, most likely, because he's a great practical player. Let's see if their collaboration will go to the other fields. That was my last uh, Game of the Day comment uh, from London Classic. I hope you enjoyed all of them. And have a good night. Bye. Hi there, ICC fans. My name is Jam Soatatalik, and you have been listening to the game of the day from the London Chess Classic. And now comes the new Winchess trivia question, where one lucky ICC member each day during the tournament can win a one-year subscription to the award-winning new in chess magazine. All you have to do is listen carefully to the following question and send your answer by email to us at trivia at chessclub.com. Please remember to also include your postal address. Entries will be open until one hour into the next day's play, and the first randomly drawn correct answer will be announced in channel 165 midway through each round of our live chess.fm broadcast. Send your answers to us at trivia at chessclub.com. And remember to send us your full name and postal address so we will know where to send the magazine should you win. Good luck, everyone. The winner of yesterday's New Winches trivia question is New York 1924 from United Kingdom. What event running at the same venue as the London Chess Classic is sponsored by the Internet Chess Club? <laughs>